Sarah, what are some of the most promising solutions that you see? Um, well, you know, I, th I think in a couple of buckets, I guess, so to speak. I think about policy ideas and solutions. I think about um, investments um, and financial changes. And I think about private sector partnerships. I think um, there are a lot of promising policy solutions. California is actually innovating one of the world's first ocean acidification action plans to look at ways to reduce the flow of pollution to the California coast, which exacerbates hypoxic conditions and um, can improve the health of the ocean and make it more resilient to climate-driven changes. I think about investments as well, um, investments in um, scientific monitoring and analysis, investments in restoration. There's some preliminary evidence to suggest that um, planting seagrass can actually mitigate hypoxic conditions. Um, and I think about private sector partnerships. Um, for example, Hog Island Oyster Company, based here in California, um, is partnering with scientists who are measuring the impacts of um, ocean acidification and working to support aquaculture um, as a sustainable ocean industry that can hopefully thrive even in the face of climate change. So I think about you know these large scale solutions that can be that I see innovated here in California and that can be then exported and amplified around the world. And it's something that we did very proactively as a city um, with the Global Climate Action Summit just in September. So I, I think there are a lot of sort of big ideas and big solutions. It's really about creating the, the critical mass and the political momentum behind them and about putting people in office ultimately who are gonna prioritize that.